The other day I saw a really nice uh, demo of ORM for Prisma. So I want to share with you a basic walkthrough of how this ORM works. And I think it's pretty cool. It's a very, very nicely written, very clean ORM for Node. So as you can see, it supports TypeScript and various integration with different types of front-end framework or back-end framework like Express or Next. It even does GraphQL well and Apollo and Happy Framework. So uh, pretty much uh, most of the famous frameworks that you work with in Node, it's going to support Prisma. So for those of you who don't know what an ORM is, it's a layer on top of your database. So instead of you doing like a SQL statements, like select, update, delete. Instead of you doing that manually, writing SQL statements, you can use an ORM as a layer on top of it. So instead of writing a select statement, you would do something like this to make your code much cleaner because they, Prisma will translate that into a SQL or any database's statement to the back end. So it's like a translation layer. So it supports MySQL, Postgres, and SQLite at the moment. And these are the three, one of the three most famous relational databases that uh, most people use on their backend. So if you do use that, I recommend try out Prisma to see how that works for you. So let's get a quick start going. So there is this command here to create a quick starter project in your repo so you can play with Prisma. So once you do this, it will create this repository called Prisma. And inside of Prisma folder, you'll see a couple of things. So first thing you need to do is when you, you need to go into the Prisma folder and then do an NPM, NPM install. Now this will start a very basic TypeScript project to your repo. And this will install all the dependencies for Prisma, which is Prisma clients. But there are a couple of dev de dependencies like the actual Prisma uh, application itself and TypeScript related things. You don't really need TypeScript, but for this example, it will be in TypeScript, but we don't use too much types in here. So don't worry, it will feel just like JavaScript. So when you go to scripts, let's inspect the uh, the folder a little bit. The scripts JS, sorry, scripts TS is the main entry point of the application. We'll be mostly running node of this app. Um, so we do have a command here for npm run dev. This will run TypeScript on the script.ts file to compile it and then run it. So this will be a very basic application right now. So you should un pretty much understand what that is. It brings in Prisma and then it creates a new instance of the Prisma client. So in there, it will we, we have an async main function. The reason it's async because we need to make connection to the Prisma database, which is asynchronous and returns a promise. And then you have a main block. So you call the main function and then you try to catch errors if, it, if there's any. So in the end, you always disconnect the database from Prisma to clean up. So that's the main script JS. And if we look at the package JSON, there's nothing really much in there. We mentioned things before, but most important is a script command. So you can do npm run dev to run your command, run your script, and then you can see your results. Now the other folder that's very, very important is the Prisma folder. So there's another folder called Prisma. So inside a Prisma folder, you'll see a couple of things. Now the first thing is the env file. So this is the, the environment file where you can add database connection strings, your secrets, like passwords and usernames and stuff in here. So right now we don't have anything. Our database URL is going to be this local file path called dev.db. This is a database Prisma made for us automatically when we start the repo, when we clone the repo. And I'll tell you, I'll show you where database URL is being used. So if you go into schema.prisma, this is a file that defines the schema of this SQLite database. So right now this is a SQLite database. And here you the URL is when you use this command env, it will look at the env file and replace the value with this. So we're pretty much saying get the database from local. Connect to the database that's local, dev.db, and use that as a database. And here you have a, a couple of boilerplate stuff uh, from Prisma. And here you're telling it that we want to use Prisma Client.js as a provider. And down here you have two schemas. These are models. 
So models for the database, to, it tells you what type of data each field, each uh, table uh, accepts. So you have a post table and you have a couple of fields. And if you look at it, this is pretty similar to any MySQL database setup. Um, you have a ID field, which is an integer, and it's a default field, and it's like a primary key, and it has auto increment enabled. So when you answer, insert another entry to the database, this number will automatically increase. And here you have the title, the post, you have the content. So here's a question mark at the end that marks that this is a optional field. You don't need the value in here, but you'd always need a title. Publish is a Boolean and it defaults to false. Author is a user and it has a relational field to another um, to an author ID. So down here, and this is the ID of the author. So you these two I'll show you later. It's useful when you make a kind of like a join statement in SQL. So down here, you have the user table, very straightforward. You have the auto increment ID with primary key, email, string, that's unique. So when you have a unique field, that means another field, another entry in this table cannot have the same email. So this field needs to be unique. If you try to insert something with the same email, it will reject it. And then here you have a name of the user, uh, that's optional. And then post. So this is interesting. It post is a accepts an array of posts. So this, this means that this user can have multiple posts under this field. So we'll go into that a little bit later. But let's try to get started on Prisma and then let's see what happens if we, if we run this. So one thing I like to do is I like to get the Prisma Studio. This file is very, very useful. Uh, sorry, this app is very useful. You can get it from the website. So this is a visualizer of the database. So you can see in real time what your database looks like after you make modifications. So it's a very useful way to inspect it. So here you can click on select schema and then input this schema file here as the, as the input. So when you open this schema file, I already had it open. So you're able to see that there are a couple of folders, sorry, there are a couple of um, tables that were set up that were the models for this database. So as you can see, we have the post model and then the user model. So you can click on post model. So as you can see, we have a couple of entries in here. And then if you want to see more, you can go to the user. So we, you can immediately see what's in the database right now for each table. So that's very useful for you when you try to debug things, when you try to make changes to the database, but you can also make the changes on the UI like this. So when you click on this, so you just delete it, press save, and that will actually change the, the value in the database. Very useful. So let's get started on this and let's write some code to do some basic, basic database manipulation. So the first thing we like to do is we want to get, let's say I want to get all users from this user table. Basically, I want to get all everything in here. So how do we do it? So remember, this is an async function. We need to always do await. So you can do constant all users equals await prisma dot the name of the table, which is user. And then you can do find many. So this is like return a uh, select all or like select star. So if I console log all users and then I do npm run dev, you should be able to see the data that's coming back from the database. So which is in this case is this database, right? So this is this is very useful if you want to say like give me all the data in here that in um give me all the data from this table. So so the other the other example is this find many command accepts a parameter. So here you can include a couple of rules in here for it's kind of like a filter, like like the where statement, right? So if I want all the all the all the posts all the users in here who has at least one post, you can do this. You can do include and then you can do posts true. So here I want all the users with posts that's true. That means it has posts. 
all the users we pass post. So you do this. So as you can see, you have um, you actually enter it actually returns with the value of the post field, right? So when you do this, because it knows that you're looking for all the post all the users with posts in their in their scheme in their role in the database role. Now, as you can see, we can't really see what's in post, right? So that's a nice trick you can do instead of console.log, you can do console.dir. So console.directory will show you. Um, did it not work? Oh, sorry. I need to include a second parameter. So if I want the um, def equals no. So when you do this, you should be able to print out the database. You see, like now, post is visible, and you can see exactly what's in the what's in the the post field for this user. So I find this trick very handy. You can use it in other places as well. Um, Console.dir. It's kind of new to me. I just found out, so I want to share with you. So that's the way you do kind of like a, a where statement, I guess. So now, since this is like the basic basics of selecting things, finding things, and filtering things, but trust me, there's so much more it offers, like sorting and like more, you, like you want to find unique entry in the database, like all that is available in the in the website of Prisma documentation. But for now, let's do another example where we insert data. Let's make like a, more values into one of these tables, right? So inserting the the data into the database is very, very similar as well. So let's say I want to create a new post, right? So post is await prisma dot. So I want to make it create a new post in the post folder. So you do create. So now we have to enter some data into the database, right? So we always preceded by data. So in data, you can pretty much, uh, since we're looking at posts, if you look at the fields in posts, we have uh, title, content, author, like uh, published author. So some of these fields are pretty optional. We don't really need to insert the data, but for us, let's let's insert a um, a data to it, right? So let's insert a title. Enter code. Right. Um, subscribe to Pentacode. So that's the the title of the post. And let's do this. Author connect email. So let's go to the author. I'll show you what this means later. So let's grab this value here. All right. So if I do a council log of posts right now, I don't really need to do a council log that post, but we can just see what happens. So if I do npm run dev right now, all right. So it returns to me that this this new post with an ID of four and title subscribe to Pentaco. And remember, we the publish value of this. Oh, it's automatically set to false. Author ID one. So as you can see, what so what is going on here? So we just inserted a new post with a title subscribe to Pentacode, and ID four is auto incremented. We didn't enter anything for content because that's optional, and publish is automatically set to false. And then, what's interesting is that we made a new author. We inserted a new author value, but what we're doing is we're connecting it to the email field of the author. So think about it. This is doing a like it, it's inserting this entry here called post and associating it with this user, Sarah, because that's the email we use. And what's interesting is that now you see two posts on the Sarah. So as you can see, like we're creating a relation this way via code directly. So now if you query this post, you see that it's now associated with two users, right? 
get Sarah, and then you get Maria. But Sarah automatically gets that post when I do it with this one command. So that's a little different than what my SQL is doing, but we um, instead of doing like all these complex SQL queries, you can just do this, and it will allow you to to automatically um, you know associate fields with another table. So let's do an update statement. How about that? Since we made a new post, we want to do an update. So how do we do an update? Well, let's do it. Const post equals await prisma dot post dot update. Now with update statements, it's usually update like the fields and then you have a where statement where something a condition is true. And then you, you want to insert, like write the value of you want to update these fields to. So in Prisma, this is like a lot more cleaner, again, a like than the raw SQL, st SQL statement. So here you can break up into two things. Like one is the where field. This is where you want to like, so if I want to update a, the post field, I need to tell it like which post field I want to update, right? So that's where the where statement comes in. Here I want to update ID to, I want to update this row right here of the post table number four. So I want to say where ID is four, I want to change the following about this field. So instead of, let's say I made a mistake, I don't want to say subscribe to Pentacode. Um, so I want to change the title to follow Pentacode on Twitter. So this, what this does is it goes to the database, look for the ID four, and then updates the title field to follow Pentacode on Twitter. Press enter. And now we can do console.log post. So it always returns like what it what it inserted or what it did. And then if it's successful, it will tell you the updated field, right? So if I want to update this post field with this where ID is for, it will tell me like, okay, we just updated this ID for, and now the text should be follow Pentacle on Twitter. So if I go here and then refresh, as you can see, this thing here just updated to follow Pentacle on Twitter. So isn't that amazing? So now you can do update statements very easily. And not to mention, you can mix and match all of these statements together to create complex queries. And you don't have to write a single line of MySQL or SQL statements or SQLite, whatever. Um, all you have to do is play with the interface of Prisma and you'll be able to do all of that. So I highly suggest you go to their website and then click on the Try Prisma in five minutes section. So our tutorial is heavily based on that, but I just want to show you visually how you can do that. Um, this is extremely powerful in the documentation. You have the um, you have a ton of guides, concepts like the APIs for any any like statements. So definitely take it out. I'm still exploring that. So down the line, when I get better at this, I will do more tutorials. Maybe we'll have like a React application that uses this ORM to connect to our database. So it'll be really, really cool. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next time.